Hey guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be telling you guys 15 items that I regret purchasing or registering for. I'm asked about this all the time now that we're expecting baby number three, so I decided to go ahead and make this video. Now, I've also been asked my baby registry must-haves, but there is no way to make that movie without it being super long, and I'm planning to do a lot of different videos that have stuff on that checklist, but what I did for you guys is I made a blog post, and I will link it down below, but in that blog post, you are going to find a printable checklist that you can take to the store if that's what you want to do, just to reference. I have it in both Word and PDF. Then, if you're wanting to just add stuff from your phone, I have the whole checklist inside the blog post, and all the items are listed at Target, Amazon, and Bye Bye Baby, since those are the three most popular places that people register at, and then, like I said, it's linked, so it's easy to add things to your registry from your phone. So, if that's something that you're interested in, you also want to know some baby registry must-haves, I do have all of that linked down below. And you can check it out. Comment there if you have any questions, if you're not able to download the PDF or anything like that. But otherwise, I'm going to jump right into my baby registry regrets. So, first regret, outfits in advance. I regret registering for clothes because honestly, Clothes are one of those things that people are going to get you whether or not you register for it. And the hard thing about clothes is that my son grew a lot faster than my daughter did. And so even though I thought I was buying things in the right season, he grew really fast. So they ended up not working in the right season, if that makes sense. Like, he needed more spring-summer clothes when I had, like, winter clothes. And so with my daughter, she followed it pretty well, but she was also a little behind in sizes. So my recommendation, if you do get a lot of outfits, to just get things that you can easily alter to fit every season. But don't go crazy on like jackets or winter clothes or summer clothes or whatever else unless it's the next size. Because, yeah, otherwise you're just going to end up with a lot of clothes you don't use. And honestly, when you buy outfits and sizes way far in advance, you forget about them they get mis misplaced or whatever else because you're not using them right away that more often than not they're not used anyway so I buy newborn I have a handful of zero to three months and I have like I said some in every size but just a base point that I'll kind of work from and my first son and this son are pretty similar in due date so we'll see how that pans out for them but like I said just keep that in mind that they grow at different paces and you don't want to go too crazy on the seasonal clothes at least when getting outfits. Next thing is a large swing. And I know this is really popular, like the Fisher Price Snuggle Bunny I know is really popular and um, ones like that, but I just hate how much space they would take up in the house. And then what was also hard for me is we got that for my son for a baby shower gift and then when he got older I just thought he was gonna break it by the time my daughter was around if he wanted to climb in it just didn't feel very sturdy so we ended up selling it and we actually got a portable crib for my daughter which I liked a lot better because it was easy to fold up and store somewhere else so it wasn't just taking up space in my house all the time it was easy to take to other people's houses the only downsize is it requires a lot of batteries so yeah but I don't know. So the swing thing, I'm not even sure if I'll get one because I have the Boppy Lounger and the Auto Rock and Play. If I do, I've looked at the Nuna Leaf. I've also looked at the Mamoru, but I have liked just the portable option the most so far with this swing because then also when you're done using the swing, it takes up so much room to store it. that It's like, yeah, there's just a lot of things that I have a hard time with, with the large baby swings. Next is a play mat. Now, I do want to get something like the Skip Hop Play Spot. That's like this foam thing, or often I'll just get a rug, or really just use like a swaddle blanket. I had a hard time with the play mats because I felt like they just took up space on our floor and in our house, but my kids just didn't really use them. And when they did use them, I felt like they didn't stay on the mat really that well. By the time they were finally interested in the toys, it just kind of slid all over everywhere, even if it was on a rug, and 
they couldn't always grab everything even when I tried to add like extra rings and stuff and I'm just I'm mm, I've just never been a huge fan of the mat, so I sold that, never looked back, don't plan to get it for this one. I may get one of those options just to put over, like a toy bar tier thing, to put over a swaddle blanket, but honestly, I'll probably just end up getting a few toys and doing it as more of a tummy time thing and not really something hanging over, but yeah, that's just my opinion. Was never a huge fan of the play mats. Next is... A car seat stroller combo so this one's hard because there's a lot out there and I don't think they're all bad I had a hard time with the Graco one and it was because the stroller was so bulky so I felt like it took up a lot of space in our trunk the carrier itself I want to say it was a snug ride something 35 maybe wasn't the most comfortable to carry around but I'm really short I'm 5'2 and I like I had it for maybe five six months and then I just got sick and tired of it I sold both we got my son just a regular convertible car seat and then we just got a lighter more compact single stroller and then with my daughter and my son we actually have the up a baby vista now and I'll be doing a review on that one later but then I also chose the Nuna Pippa to go with it so and I'll be showing that later on as well, a review on both of them. But that was our choice. The Uppa Baby, I don't feel like it was really any lighter than the Graco, but that's also because it can hold more than one kid. So I guess for me, I felt like it didn't bother me as much, but when you just have one, my problem, I guess, is I want strollers to fold up like an umbrella stroller, but work like a heavy-duty stroller. And I just, there's always something about every stroller. All right, and next is a large high chair. I do not recommend getting one of those stand-up or stand-alone high chairs. They're just super bulky. They're super hard to store anywhere, put anywhere. You're just kind of stuck letting them hang out, and they start to bug you really fast. So what we ended up doing is we returned our high chair and we ended up getting the Fisher Price Space Saver which is 10 times easier to just hook up to a chair throw in our car when we were going somewhere else to eat our son at four still uses it we just push the handles down and push it up against the table and he kinda just uses it as a booster and it has just been night and day difference so if you're gonna get a high chair I recommend just getting a smaller one that hooks to a chair but I don't recommend getting one of the bigger and bulkier ones because there's just nowhere to put it when you're not eating so it just kinda gets in the way but that's just my opinion. Alright, so the next thing is cheap diaper bags. So there's two sides to this. One, it didn't work for me because I'm a little harder on bags. I've always been obsessed with purses, so that's why I'm more drawn to ones that are leather, look more like purses and bags like that as opposed to regular diaper bags. On the other hand, getting something cheaper, if you don't want to carry the same thing forever, you don't feel as bad switching to a new bag when it's less expensive or whatever. And some people, like my friends, have had bags and they have lasted a really, really long time. They just didn't for me. They drove me crazy. They weren't functioning as well. So I feel like there's just no one size fits all. But for me personally, I think that's something like a stroller and a car seat that's just worth the investment because it's something that I literally use every single day. Now, the next thing is toys. And I wouldn't say, like, I regret, just don't register for them. I feel like toys, pacifiers, teethers, clothes, you cannot register for these things and you're going to get a bunch of them anyways. So that's really my only opinion. There were a lot of toys that we had that my son just never touched. And I feel like it's almost easier to see what they're interested in and what they're drawn to and then kind of get stuff then. And then going crazy with collecting all these toys when they're not even interested in them for the first little while. But that's just my opinion. Next, shoes. Shoes are just, they're cute but you lose them and they kick them off and they don't fit and their feet are so different when they're little that they just seem kind of pointless to me. We had a few a couple times that I would do for like pictures and things but for the most part I just don't think they're really worth the struggle or losing them until your kid is crawling or starting to walk because otherwise they're just they're just kind of pointless but the next thing is a car seat insert and I didn't even really register for it, but it is something that I did end up getting for my shower. It's not even considered safe if it's not something that came with your car seat. 
but I don't know what it is. You just think when you look at, oh, I need something extra, or even for your stroller, or whatever else, but most everything comes with its own padding, and that's the safest thing to use, and I just never used it. And I had it sitting there thinking I would use it in maybe my stroller, but I just never, ever, ever used it. So next is a first aid kit. And the only reason I say that is because they come with like a brush and a comb and nail files and all this stuff you're never going to use. So I usually just recommend buying all this stuff separately. I was for a while getting the safety first one because I could never find the medicine dispenser bottle by itself. But I did figure out you could buy that separate. So now that's what I recommend to my friends. Just get nail, th <sighs> nail thermometers. Just get nail clippers, a thermometer, the medicine dispenser, maybe some windy gas relief. Uh, you could do the nose freezer if you want to. They do give you the bulb syringe in the hospital. But, yeah, really that's all you need from that first aid kit. So I would just buy this stuff separately. But, again, that's just me. My personal experience and preference. And then next is receiving blankets. Oh my gosh, I do not even understand the point of those. They don't stretch, they're not that big, you can't really swaddle with them, you can't really do anything with them, they're just like awkward. I guess you could kind of use them as burp rags, but I hated them, and I was given so many of them that I wish I had just kept them packaged and returned them because I much prefer swaddles, the muslin blankets, um, different things like that. I have Copper Pearl, Baby Owlet, Aiden and Anai are good too. And I'm like looking, trying to remember, in the Cloud Island ones. I love all of those. I just don't like the ones that are just so small. And even the Cloud Island and Baby Alette, like, they don't stretch a whole ton. And neither does Aiden and I, really. But the thing is that they're bigger, so you can, like, work with them more. The receiving blankets, just the generic ones, I, I did not like them at all. Then, the next is Mesh Teethers. So I did really like these with my son. I could put frozen bananas in them, and he really, really loved them when he was teething, but it is impossible to clean them, like impossible, that I was just tossing them all the time and couldn't get them clean. So I really just ended up hating them. I did like the silicone ones, and those worked a lot better. But, yeah, so, I don't know. That was just my thing. I just didn't really like them. I know they're really popular. I do like the ones that aren't mesh because they're a lot easier to rinse out. My kids did like eating those frozen bananas when they were teething, but cleaning the mesh ones were just, it was a disaster. Next is Medela hand pump bags. Hand pump. Don't regret that one. Love the hand pump. But the Medela pump bags have a little hole after you like zip it shut. There's a hole on each side. And they were just a pain. It's like you really had to like pour them just the right way to get them into a bottle. And I just hated them. They did not work well. They didn't even seem accurate. They seemed so much smaller than the other bags and stuff. And they just drove me crazy. The Lansano, I think that's how you say it, the ones that come in the purple box, worked a lot better for me. They were a lot easier to pour. It didn't matter if I poured it this way or poured it sideways. I wasn't making a mess going into the bottle, and they seemed pretty accurate, and they warmed up really well in a cup of warm water, or whatever, and yeah, they just worked a lot better, but I did not like the Medela um, pumping bags. Then, along with that, I also wasn't a fan of disposable nursing pads. They are a lot more convenient, but they just started to kind of have a smell for me. They would stick kind of funny to me. And I just really preferred the reusable ones and tossing them in the wash. But I know everyone is different, and you're not really going to know until you try them out. So luckily, a lot of welcome boxes and things like that usually have some disposable pads that you can try out. I just didn't really like them personally for myself. And lastly is the Boppy Nursing Pillow. <laughs> so... I maybe used that two or three times with both my kids when I nursed them and I felt like I could have accomplished the same thing just using a pillow. I know with other people it's a complete lifesaver, but for me it just kind of hung out when I had my daughter and when I had my son. I do really like the Boppy Lounger, but I'm just not really a fan of the Boppy nursing pillow in general. I am also not planning to breastfeed my third kid, so I didn't have a problem really selling it or thinking it would be any different with this one. Like I said, it has worked for moms who are breastfeeding more, but I really only used it a few times to try to breastfeed with my kids, 
and I nursed them both for almost a year and I just, yeah, like I said, you could have accomplished the same thing with a pillow and I just didn't find them that convenient. And it's not like you'd really take them on the go or anything, so I didn't really want to rely on nursing with one. So, I don't know. That's my opinion. But those are the 15 things that I regret from my baby registry, registering for, purchasing myself, that I would not recommend that others get. But again, just personal preference. It works differently for everyone, but that's my thoughts on those items. And like I said earlier, I do have my baby registry must-haves in a blog post down below that you can find and add that stuff to your list. If there's anything I'm missing on there, please feel free to comment. I love hearing about new things that are out on the market because it seems to change every time I have a baby. But everything listed on there is what I use, what we've bought ourselves, and we're planning to use. So yeah, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching.